Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Shayantun Mondol. I am a third year junior resident in Department of Radio Diagnosis, Neil Rathan Sharkar Medical College and Hospital in Kolkata. My today's topic of discussion will be MRI evaluation of congenital brain anomalies. Coming to the introduction, congenital brain defects are abnormalities in the brain that are present at birth. The defects typically affect the bone and soft tissue in the head and spine. More than 2,000 different congenital malformations of the brain have been described in the literature and their incidence is reported to be about 1% of all live births. Magnetic resonance imaging, that is MRI, is very useful in studying these malformations. Coming to the incidence, 2 to 3% of the newborns are usually seen to be manifesting congenital deformations of the brain and spine, which increases up to 4 to 6% by the age of 5. In 40 to 60% of all birth defects, cause is usually unknown. However, 10 to 15% of the cases can be attributed to genetical or chromosomal abnormalities. 10% of the cases can be attributed to environmental factors, while 20 to 25% of the cases can be attributed to to genetic and environmental causes. The aims and objectives for this study is to study the MRI findings of the congenital brain anomalies and a simplified classification of congenital anomalies affecting brain followed by images and imaging findings of the common and certain interesting or important congenital anomalies of the brain. Materials and methods. The study was done on 15 patients in a time span of six months who presented to us with complaints of seizures, developmental delay, weakness, learning disabilities, impaired cognition, vomiting, and irritability. Magnetic resonance imaging was performed by GE Cigna HD 1.5 Tesla MRI machine. There is a table showing classification of congenital brain anomalies. On the left-hand side, we have the specific anomalies. On the right-hand side, we have the timing of the gestational defect. In case of dorsal induction, cherry malformations manifest by four to six weeks, while encephalocils are seen to manifest by five to six weeks. In case of ventral induction, holoprosencephaly is seen to be manifested by 5 to 6 weeks, septo-optic dysplasia 6 to 7 weeks, and dandy Walker malformation 7 to 10 weeks. Neural proliferation disorders like neurofibromatosis manifests by 5 weeks to 6 months, same for the case of tuberous sclerosis. Primary hydrencephaly, however, manifests by 3 months or can manifest later. Migrational defects like cephaly manifests usually by 2 months, agaria or pachygyria by 3 months, and gray matter heteropia usually manifests by 5 months. The, this is a case in which we can see the dilated lateral ventricles bilaterally with absence of occipital horn of the both lateral ventricles and absence of the corpus callosum. This is a case of complete corpus callosal agenesis with all possible. In this case, we can see a well-defined triangular cystic lesion, which is extending from the margin of the body of the left lateral ventricle up to the cortex, having a density of CSF, which is hypointense on T1 and hyperintense on hyperintense on T2 areas. This is a case of unilateral open lip syncephaly. In this kind of case, we can see an axial coronal and sagittal images showing areas of pachy and agaria in the parieto occipital lobes bilaterally. Shallow sulci are noted in the frontal lobes bilaterally. This is a case of incomplete lesencephaly. In, in this case, we can see there is a tonsillar herniation with syringohydromyelia in the upper cervical region which are findings which are consistent with the Arnold Cherry malformation. In this case, a very well-defined cystic lesion is noted in the posterior fossa in the midline, which is hypointense on T1 and hyperintense on T2. Dilated both lateral ventricles with very little cerebral parenchyma is noted, which appears to be thinned up. Third ventricle is not visualized and is supposed to be compressed by the posterior fossa cyst. Vermis of the cerebellum is not present and the tegmentum is not elevated. Posterior fossa midline cyst and causing acridactyl stenosis with hydrencephaly is the final diagnosis. It is also can be attributed to dandy Walker malformation variant. Coming to the conclusion, MRI provides detailed multiplanar imaging and exquisite contrast differentiation, which is essential for classification and determination of congenital malformations of the brain. Knowledge of normal brain development is essential for correctly identifying abnormalities. The classification of congenital malformations is continually changing with the new insights into brain development. As the genetics of congenital malformation becomes more complex, MRI can provide more important information on specific brain phenotypes. These are the references from which I have made this slide. Thank you.